and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Swapnil Joglika. Let's take a look at the stories for the day. Baijus is in the news again. The Enforcement Directorate has carried out searches at three premises linked to it in Bengaluru. The agency later claimed to have found some incriminating documents related to its probe into alleged foreign exchange violations done by the EdTech major. The company is now facing greater regulatory scrutiny than it has ever before. So is this the end of the road for Baijus? Or is it just another bump in its eventful journey? Bashwar Kumar brings you the answer. The COVID-19 pandemic gave a fillip to online learning and Baiju's latched onto the opportunity to establish itself as a major online tutoring firm. In fact, the Bangalore-based firm achieved a valuation of $22 billion last year in March, making it India's most valued startup and the world's 12th at the time. But 2022 was also a year of challenges for the company. In fact, its founder and CEO, Baiju Ravindran, wrote in his year-end internal letter that the challenges faced in 2022 had equipped the company to weather every future storm and thrive for decades to come. Little could he have known that in a matter of months, his company would indeed find itself in the middle of a major storm. On April 29th this year, the Directorate of Enforcement, or ED, said that it had conducted searches and seizure action at three premises in Bengaluru, in the case of Baiju Ravindran and his company, Think and Learn Private Limited, the parent company of Baiju's. The ED took action under the provisions of the Foreign Exchange Management Act, or FEMA, in connection with its probe into alleged foreign exchange violations. The ED said that various incriminating documents and digital data were seized. The ED statement also highlighted the following points. First, the FEMA searches had revealed that the company had received foreign direct investment to the tune of 28,000 crore rupees during the period from 2011 to 2023. Second, it had also remitted 9,754 crore rupees to various foreign jurisdictions during the same period in the name of overseas direct investment. Third, it had booked around 944 crore rupees in the name of advertisement and marketing expenses, including the amount remitted to foreign jurisdictions. Fourth, the company had not prepared its financial statements since the financial year 2020-21 and had not got the accounts audited, which was mandatory. In its statement, the company said that it had been completely transparent with the authorities and was confident that the matter would be resolved in a satisfactory manner. A day after the ED searches, Baiju's founder and CEO, Baiju Ravindran, said that Baiju's had brought more FDI to India than any other Indian startup at 28,000 crore rupees. He added that Baiju's was India's largest employer among startups. So, what's next for Baiju's? The path from here appears to be that a complaint will be lodged under Section 16.3 of FEMA regulations, whereby, uh, you know, the allegation, the investigations, what they have done, they would raise allegations against by use, uh, possibly on com non-compliance of FEMA regulations regarding FDI as well as overseas investment. A show cause will be issued where uh, by use will have the ability to respond to the various allegations. Uh, depending upon uh, the adjudication of show cause, uh, an order will be passed imposing a penalty. The penalty can be huge. In terms of law, it can be up to three times of the forex involved. And how serious is the latest challenge faced by Baiju's? Now, uh, although we cannot at this stage say with certainty, but with, with ED being there, there is a possibility that they may be looking at uh, issues of round tripping. If that be the case, uh, then you will find other regulators besides ED stepping in whether it's income tax authorities or GST authorities or corporate affairs ministries, re-looking at uh, the entire structure and the funding of uh, Baiju's. Baiju's reputation has been taking a beating for a while now. 
Last year, Baiju came under fire for a more than 17 months delay in filing audited accounts. Earlier this year, Baiju reportedly sought more time from lenders to renegotiate an agreement governing a 1.2 billion dollar loan that was in breach of covenants. One of the terms set by the lenders was that Baiju would hire a chief financial officer, which it did only recently. Adding to its troubles, asset manager BlackRock has reportedly reduced Baiju's valuations by about 50% to 11.5 billion dollars. Baiju also posted losses of 4588 crore rupees in FY21, 19 times more than the preceding year. Last but not least, the latest troubles with the ED have come at a time when Baiju is in the process of raising 700 million dollars from investors. So, what lies at the core of Baiju's troubles? The problems that Baiju faces are very serious in the sense that the company has uh, grown too fast too soon without putting in uh, necessary processes in place. So, is this the end of the line for Baiju? I don't think this will be the end of the road for Baiju as such, but the company needs to uh, work towards uh, uh, sorting out all these problems in uh, on a war footing. I would think they should not chase valuation. They should chase. I would say they should put in place robust uh, processes, be it sales processes, be it compliance processes, be it it uh, people processes. It is not the end of the road for Baiju as long as it can answer all of the ED's questions satisfactorily. but clearly it also can't be business as usual and a serious emphasis on laying down the right processes is warranted delay on this front could even hamper the fundraising prospects of the larger indian startup ecosystem which is already wrestling with an ongoing funding winter that's expected to last a while Notwithstanding the ongoing woes, Baiju still rules the online learning space, which grew rapidly during the pandemic, when most educational institutions were shut. The period was a game changer for the online media streaming industry too, as theaters were shut during most of 2020. Millions subscribed to Netflix and Amazon Prime, but it seems the industry is staring at yet another disruption. Why? Because Reliance is turning up the heat in this sector too. After live streaming FIFA World Cup and IPL matches, Jio Cinema has signed a deal with HBO to stream popular Western TV shows and movies such as Succession. So is Jio Cinema the new star of OTT? Tushar Verma finds out. The Indian OTT space is getting riveting by the day. Jio Cinema is set to add more than 100 films and TV shows to expand its content mix. The platform's popularity skyrocketed when it bagged streaming rights for the FIFA 2022 World Cup last year for 450 crore rupees, followed by the digital viewing rights of the ongoing season of IPL for a massive 24,000 crore rupees, outbidding both Sony and Disney. More recently, Jio Cinema sealed a deal with US-based television network HBO. The deal includes all content from HBO, its Max Originals, and movies and series produced by Warner Brothers Discovery. This will include popular series like Harry Potter and Game of Thrones. Do these developments show that among all OTT platforms, Jio Cinema is perhaps the new star? I think if you look at the market right now, uh, Hotstar and Netflix uh, are the leaders uh, in uh, you know A Ward and S Ward market respectively. I think uh, over a period of time, Jio Cinema, the way the kind of content they are showcasing, the way it is trying to go, you know, in terms of only pure play A Ward, they have no S Ward mechanism as of now. Uh, we do foresee that you know they could potentially become the market leader. Uh, if you look at the overall video advertising industry in India, I think YouTube is the largest player, uh, which is having a size of close to uh, almost about a billion dollar of uh, revenue. Uh, you know, pure play A Ward. Uh, I think uh, you know that's how number two will be displaced by Jio Cinema. In fact, a lot of the ad dollars on IPL front uh, on cricket have already started to flow from uh, you know Hotstar to Jio Cinema. According to news sources, Disney Plus Hotstar has around 49 million subscribers in India. Sony Live had 24 million subscribers in the country as of December 2022. 
Amazon Prime Video around 18 million and Netflix the global streaming giant 7 million and among these there is Jio Cinema free of cost neither for the FIFA World Cup nor for the IPL did people have to spend a dime as of March 2023 Jio Cinema had 65 million unique visitors while it primarily streams sports content other platforms offer different types of content on demand with the new HBO deal Jio Cinema is now set to charge its subscribers for the content on its platform However, in an earlier interview with Business Standard, Anil Jairaj, CEO of Sports for Viacom 18 Media, had said that there were no plans for subscription in sports. Let's hear what experts have to say about the escalating competition among video streaming OTT platforms in India. Reliance and Telecom came in and looked at every single player out there and said these are doing a pari passu game. And in comes Reliance with Volte, and I think Volte actually, you know, really redefined the game. and you'll see this in literally every space that reliance centers disrupt the game and move forward when it comes to competition i think competition gets vanquished one channel at a time and we have seen vacation of this space for a while now and suddenly you will see some people who have vacated the space left india uh, because they found it unviable coming back uh, with and through jio and i think that's exactly that's going to happen you know jio is going to become the mass uh, you know uh, uh, entity which actually coagulates uh, literally every channel there is jio cinema which is part of mukesh ambani controlled reliance industries has made several investments buying streaming rights for the fifa world cup and ipl editions from 2023 to 27 have been expensive encouraged by the viewership for ipl jio cinema is expecting to generate high revenue through advertisements this brings the question is free viewership sustainable we don't foresee any kind of uh, you know any kind of any of these platforms other coming closer to profitability or even break even unless you see some sort of consolidation uh, incremental arpus is also another way which is going to be very supportive so in case the market has got reasonable good amount of s4 revenue or arpus that will you know lead to a you know uh, you know defining the overall profitability and kind of moving closer to break even you know for the platforms which are there uh, as far as break up is concerned i think broadly india market is dominated by award uh, um, sward uh, is only about uh, 35% of the overall uh, india video ott market if uh, jio cinema continues to offer content free and if other platforms also cut arpus or you know go pure play award uh, you will see a disruption in the form of you know sward revenues kind of plateauing at these levels for now in the near term but going ahead once arpus come back you see sword revenues also scaling up what's favoring jio cinema's fortune is the tremendous viewership it has garnered in recent months experts believe that in the medium term jio cinema could turn out to be a competitor to youtube the market leader in video streaming as the indian ott players sweat it out to add and retain viewership it's going to be an interesting space to watch out for the sugar in your coffee or tea which you relish while binge watching ott films has become dearer of late it is because uneven weather conditions are choking global supplies and increasing demand for this commodity but some are happy rising prices of sugar have sweetened related stocks so will the scenario remain the same in the coming months as well should investors use this opportunity to accumulate sugar stocks in their portfolio lovish adarat brings you a detailed report Buoyed by the jump in prices of raw sugar in global and domestic markets, the shares of major sugar companies have been doing well for a while now. Listed domestic players like Balrampur Chini, Dalmia Bharat Sugar, EID Paddy, Uttam Sugar and Sri Renuka Sugars have surged in the range of 12 to 26% in the past month as against a 5.9% rise in the S&P BSE Sensex during the same period. So, what is the trigger behind this upside in sugar stocks? and lists attribute 0.4% year on year fall in the world's top sugar producing country brazil's shift to ethanol production due to cut in crude oil output and erratic weather conditions sugar stocks also rise temporarily now sugar prices are rising they are up 7% in 3 weeks prices are at 11 year highs the present price rise has been triggered by lower output of sugar Globally, the lower output has been caused mainly by poor European crop. The recent decision of OPEC Plus to cut crude output also has led to 
lower sugared output due to diversion to ethanol production in india extreme uh, you know, summer and uh, unseasonal rains particularly in the largest uh, sugar producing state maharashtra have also contributed to uh, lower sugar availability in terms of domestic sugar production sugar industry body isma slashed output estimates to 328 lakh tons for the current marketing year ending september from an earlier estimate of 340 lakh tons this revision came after production fell in the country's top sugar producing states maharashtra and karnataka due to uneven rainfall against this backdrop domestic sugar prices have zoomed past 8% so far this year globally too sugar prices have seen an uptick of over 30% to 4803 rupees per kg going forward will this upcycle remain in place or a break is expected on the horizon here is what analysts say we believe that uh, the domestic sugar prices will remain firm one mainly on account of uh, uh, you know lower supply in the global market second uh, indian production which was earlier anticipated to be at around 34 to 34 and a half million uh, tons for the current sugar season is this now expected uh, to be around 33 to 33.5 million tons uh, for the current sugar season because of the drop in the production in the maharashtra so we believe that uh, the domestic sugar prices would continue to remain firm so that will help sugar companies to post better realization for its sugar business from an investment perspective Powerscar of Sher Khan recommends Triveni Engineering and Balrampur Chini for the medium to long term. Preferred picks one is Triveni uh, Engineering and Industries. Uh, the company has uh, sugar uh, uh, you know uh, uh, production happening in the western part of the UP where the impact of the unfavorable season is quite less so we should expect better recovery and uh, sugar stock pro, uh, for the company. Also their engineering business has recovered well from the Uh, pre uh, from the covid uh, uh, disruption and now it is back on track expected to perform well uh, they are also expanding their distillery capacity and the ethanol division is expected to perform well so overall triveni triveni engineering is expected to do well balrampur chini is one of the top players in this uh, space it has one of the lean balance sheet and also its uh, ethanol and sugar business is expected to do well in line with what the other sugar companies are likely to post overall analysts expect sugar companies to benefit from rising prices and recommend investors to adopt a stock specific strategy meanwhile on tuesday the us federal reserve will begin its two day policy meeting back home q4 earnings will sway the markets Punjab's industrial city Ludhiana was struck by a tragedy on Sunday morning. In one of its densely populated localities, 11 people died in quick succession after coming in contact with a poisonous gas which in most likelihood emanated from manholes dotting a covered gutter. Four others are fighting for their lives in a hospital as we speak. Raga Agarwal's report tells us more about the incident and also about the likely cause. It all started at 7 a.m. Sunday morning when some people saw a man falling and turning blue near a dairy booth. Those who rushed to help him also met the same fate. By the time people of the area and authorities realized that some poisonous gas was wreaking havoc, 11 people had lost their lives. According to reports, 10 of those who died were from just three families which traced their roots to Bihar. The other person was yet to be identified. Even one of the two PCR policemen who rushed to the scene fainted and had to be rushed back. It was then that masked fire brigade men and NDRF personnel were pressed into action. They are camping in the affected area which has been evacuated. Ludhiana's deputy commissioner Surbhi Malik has said that some chemical was most likely dumped into the sewerage through a nearby manhole and it reacted with the methane gas to form some type of neurotoxins. The deputy commissioner also said there is no factory in the block where the incident happened but there are several factories and industries spread across Jiaspura. 
In a statement issued later, Ludhiana District Administration has said that high levels of hydrogen sulfide gas was detected by the air quality sensors of the NDRF team and that this might have caused the tragedy. Punjab Police has registered an FIR under the Section 304 culpable homicide not amounting to murder of the Indian Penal Code. The case was filed for dumping industry into sewage illegally, which led to chemical reaction and production of toxic gases. A magisterial probe has also been ordered into the incident. President Draupadi Murmu, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwat Maan and Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar were among those who expressed grief over the deaths. Punjab and Bihar governments have also announced ex gratia to the kin of the deceased. India has reported several incidents of gas leaks in the past. In 1984, at least 3,500 people lost their lives when a poisonous gas leaked from a pesticide plant in Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal. In 2022, the country reported at least 10 cases of gas leaks. On June 3, 178 women workers fell ill following a gas leak at the laboratory in Achutapuram of Andhra Pradesh's Vishakhapatnam. The workers fell sick after they inhaled poisonous gas that leaked at Porus Laboratories Private Limited. In another similar incident on August 3, 121 women workers were affected after gas was leaked in a garment factory in Andhra's Anakapalli district. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Experts say that hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten eggs and it is also called sewer gas. During the overnight decontamination process, authorities released caustic soda in drains to check the spread of this toxic gas. That's all for today. Catch the next episode of The Morning Show tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.